Who knows what women can be when they are finally free to become themselves? Aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. A woman has got to be able to say, and not feel guilty, who am I, and what do I want out of life? She mustn't feel selfish and neurotic if she wants goals of her own, outside of husband and children. A good woman is one who loves passionately, has guts, seriousness, and passionate convictions, takes responsibility, and shapes society. In almost every professional field, in business and in the arts and sciences, women are still treated as second-class citizens. It would be a great service to tell girls who plan to work in society to expect this subtle, uncomfortable discrimination tell them not to be quiet, and hope it will go away but fight it. A girl should not expect special privileges because of her sex, but neither should she adjust to prejudice and discrimination. Men are not the enemy, but the fellow victims. The real enemy is women's denigration of themselves. It is easier to live through someone else than to complete yourself. The freedom to lead and plan your own life is frightening if you have never faced it before. It is frightening when a woman finally realizes that there is no answer to the question, who am I, except the voice inside herself. Getting older is an adventure, not a problem. You have to say no to the old ways before you can begin to find the new yes you need. When she stopped conforming to the conventional picture of femininity she finally began to enjoy being a woman. No woman gets an orgasm from shining the kitchen floor. The feminist revolution had to be fought because women quite simply were stopped at a state of evolution far short of their human capacity. You can have it all, just not all at the same time. Some people think I'm saying, women of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your men. It's not true. You have nothing to lose but your vacuum cleaners. Regardless of your age, you will always have adventures, unexpected joys, and unexpected sorrows. The only way for a woman, as for a man, to find herself, to know herself as a person, is by creative work of her own. We need a new political movement of women and men toward a new society. By now, abortion should be obsolete. And I, and probably a lot of other feminists, wish it were obsolete, because abortion, in itself, is not a value, it is simply the right to choose, which is an essential value. Who knows what women can be when they are finally free to become themselves? Who knows what women's intelligence will contribute when it can be nourished without denying love? Protectiveness has often muffled the sound of doors closing against women. I never set out to write a book to change women's lives, to change history. It's like, who, me? Yes, me. I did it. And I'm not that different from other women. Maybe my power and glory was that I could speak my truth as a woman, and it was the truth of every woman. Men, also, have in them enormous capacities that they have to repress and fear in themselves, living up to this obsolete and brutal man-eating, bear-killing, Ernest Hemingway, crew-cut Prussian sadistic, napalm all the children in Vietnam, bang-bang you're dead, image of masculinity, the image of all-powerful masculine superiority that is absolute. Just as darkness is sometimes defined as the absence of light, so age is defined as the absence of youth. The feminists had destroyed the old image of woman, but they could not erase the hostility, the prejudice, the discrimination that still remained. Over and over again, stories in women's magazines insist that women can know fulfillment only at the moment of giving birth to a child. They deny the years when she can no longer look forward to giving birth, even if she repeats the act over and over again. In the feminine mystique, 
There is no other way for a woman to dream of creation or of the future. There is no other way she can even dream about herself, except as her children's mother, her husband's wife. It is frightening when a woman finally realizes that there is no answer to the question, who am I, except the voice inside herself. Today the problem that has no name is how to juggle work, love, home, and children. The feminine mystique has succeeded in burying millions of American women alive. The key to the trap is, of course, education. The feminine mystique has made higher education for women seem suspect, unnecessary, and even dangerous. But I think that education, and only education, has saved, and can continue to save, American women from the greater dangers of the feminine mystique. Men weren't really the enemy, they were fellow victims suffering from an outmoded masculine mystique that made them feel unnecessarily inadequate when there were no bears to kill. I have discovered that there is a crucial difference between society's image of old people and us as we know and feel ourselves to be. We can no longer ignore that voice within women that says, I want something more than my husband and my children and my home. When one begins to think about it, America depends rather heavily on women's passive dependence, their femininity. Femininity, if one still wants to call it that, makes American women a target and a victim of the sexual cell. It is easier to live through someone else than to become complete yourself. Each woman is made to feel it is her own cross to bear if she can't be the perfect clone of the male superman and the perfect clone of the feminine mystique. Economic equity is an enormous empowerment of women. Having jobs that provide income means that women can be a more effective force, a more equal force, in the political process. Women with income take themselves more seriously and they are taken more seriously. Aging will create the music of the coming century. Diversity has got to be a part of modern feminism, and I think that my feminism is stronger because it's an inclusive thing. I won't be backed into a corner that polarizes me against other women. And I wish they wouldn't be either. If women's role in life is limited solely to housewife and mother, it clearly ends when she can no longer bear more children and the children she has born leave home. To protest free speech in the name of protecting women is dangerous and wrong. There's no question that the black middle class has benefited greatly by the civil rights movement. But there is a large black underclass that does not have access to jobs. If there's no clear road to income and status except crime, we should expect social problems. You can't solve this problem without addressing the economic issues, and the same is true with gender. I wouldn't be satisfied with a life lived solely on the barricades. I reserve my right to be frivolous. There is absolutely no evidence that it is harmful to children if their mother's health, well-being and autonomy and control of her own destiny is maximized by work outside the home. Dominance is a burden. Most men who are honest will admit that. We need to see men and women as equal partners, but it's hard to think of movies that do that. When I talk to people, they think of movies of 45 years ago. Hepburn and Tracy. I understood somehow my mother's frustration. And that it was no good not only for her, but for her children or her husband, that she didn't have a real use of her ability. All year there have been these cover stories that the women's movement is dead and about the death of feminism and the post-feminist generation of young women who don't identify with feminism, and then we have the biggest march ever of women in Washington. More people than had ever marched for anything, not only more women, but more people. Neither woman nor man lives by work, or love, alone. The human self defines itself and grows through love and work, 
all psychology before and after Freud boils down to that. Feminism or the family? Carried to excess maybe. I have insisted that women cannot be defined solely in those terms. But for a great many women, not all, because we are only beginning to realize and affirm the diversity of women themselves, choosing motherhood makes motherhood itself a liberating choice. The situation of women and men is not comparable to worker boss or black and white. I knew one thing. I did not want to be a mummy like mummy. The suburban housewife, she was the dream image of the young American women and the envy, it was said, of women all over the world. The American housewife, freed by science and labor-saving appliances from the drudgery, the dangers of childbirth, and the illnesses of her grandmother had found true feminine fulfillment. The media and even, to some degree, leaders of women's organizations don't understand that the women's movement is an absolute part of society now. It is in the consciousness, it is taken for granted. It is part of the way women look at themselves, and women are looked at. I think it's tremendously important that women continue to be full participants in the corporate environment, and that they continue to seek the same responsibilities, opportunities, and rewards in that environment that in the past have only been available to men. The new mystique is that women can have it all. There's a whole new generation of women today, flogging themselves to compete for success according to the male model, in a work world structured for men with wives to handle the details of life. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.